Hello, friends. It's your old pal Lee Sanders here. Thank you all so much for checking out episode number 1034 of the RCWR show dropping to your listening ears this Thursday, July 6th of 2023. I hope you guys had a fantastic 4th of July break. Hey, so we're doing a little bit of something different this week. The traditional RCWR show that you all are accustomed to pretty much for this episode threw that playbook out the window. And for very good reason, I had woke up earlier this morning to my wife, letting me know that our pygamies, who's really getting up there in age, having a full blown seizure that lasted three minutes as she was just laying on her side, Paul shaking, saliva, the whole nine yards. It was just, and I'm glad I did not see that because I definitely would have lost it. So my day was just supposed to be a day where I get in my rest and then I go here to work and that pretty much was it. But as soon as I had heard what happened with Maggie I mean, just pretty much had flipped my world upside down. And I asked my wife, I said, well, what do we do? Are we going to take her to the vet? What exactly are we going to do? And she said, no, you know, I'm not really sure. What do you think we should do? I said, well, let me research, find out what's going on and maybe we can go from there. So I did a little bit of research and basically everything I have found on pet MD sites or similar to that nature, all were pretty much saying the same thing, which was make sure they're kept cool, they're comfortable, stay close by them, just monitor them for the next 24 hours. And if they happen to have another seizure in the span of that 24 hour period, so basically two seizures, you definitely want to go ahead, take them to the vet as soon as possible. Now, as it stands right now, at the time of this post-production recording, because what I did with a very special guest is already in the books. I'm just adding this part on for a custom greeting, a custom intro, just setting it up properly for you guys, letting you know what all is going on. But knocking on wood right now at the time of this recording, she seems to be fine. She seemed very, and I would imagine so, but out of place. Uh, coordination was off, not really sure what was going on with her bearings. It took her a minute. And then once she finally started getting her bearings together, it was a matter of staying close to us. Once Tams had decided, okay, well, since you're going to stay here, Lee, I'm going to go ahead and head to work. And uh, Maggie's pretty much been with me mostly all day, but it seems that she's now kind of getting that confidence back where now she just wants to go do her thing, go chill, lay out and everything. But it's just a sad thing to know that you have your favorite furry little friend that's getting up there in age and you know the inevitable is going to happen. You don't want to say goodbye. You wish that they can be around forever and everything. And that really had knocked me out of the loop today. So the show I had planned, uh, I was talking with my good friend, Joey Numbers of Wrestling Soup, Joe Numbers, and, you know, I was telling him what all was going on and I followed up basically saying, yeah, I'm going to do a show. And and he was like, oh, you're, you're doing a show. OK, you're going to do it with Tams. I said, no, nah, you know, we haven't done wrestling with the topics in several weeks. I, I miss doing the show with her, but it's a matter of sitting down and we will be doing it real soon. I promise you guys, we've just been really, really busy these past couple of weeks is all. And uh, Joe was like, well, what time are you going to go on? I said, well, I plan on going on live at 6 p.m. I'm not trying to you know, overlap with you guys. I don't want to step on y'all's toes. But I, I figured come in, do about an hour, hour 15, plenty of time, you know, waiting for you guys come on the air. And yeah. And so Joey volunteered to do a drive by on the show. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. I'm like, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's do it. And it really had helped. It, it really had helped. I have not reached out to him yet in a private message, but trust me, I, I will be doing it ASAP. Um, but I definitely had appreciated him doing that because it took my mind big time off of what has been a, just a, a wild day uh, with my dog and all. So really, really had appreciated that very loose, loose talk that we had that we had did on this show. You know, because at this point it was just, you know, all about 
having some laughs, telling some fun stories and just being a little bit philosophical and all that. So that's pretty much what you're getting ready to listen to. Once again, appreciate Joe Numbers from Wrestling Soup. Make sure you check him and also my good pal and Anthony Missionary Thomas of Wrestling Soup as well. Check the boys out on there every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I know normally Mish will do a show with Kev Castle typically on Wednesdays, but they've been known to do a little something on Tuesdays uh, from time to time. So either or, uh, basically, but you can definitely learn more info about wrestling soup. Not that you need me. Cause I know many of you guys are, but you know, for our core core base of RCWR show listeners, that's been with me for a very, very long time. You haven't started checking out wrestling soup yet. Check out my pals over there. They're definitely friends, uh, of the, of the family and everything. Check them out. Twitter, they got the Facebook, they got the Instagram at Wrestling Soup. You can also hop into the Wrestling Soup Discord by heading on over to discord.gg forward slash Wrestling Soup. I'll make sure all that information is in the episode description in case you missed it. But for now, kick on back and enjoy episode number 1034 of the RCWR show featuring Joe Numbers of Wrestling Soup, The Invasion. I'll be back with you guys this coming Monday night. I know we've missed a couple of Mondays, but happy to say that this latest round of classes is near its end. And I'm very excited starting to see some of my final grades come in for some of my courses and everything. Uh, At this point, I'm just working on one last assignment, which is very easy. It's pretty much a a one page paper, but I'm definitely back on the air with you guys this Monday, July 10th, 1115 p.m. is soon after WWE Raw goes off the air. Yes, I said Eastern because I was trying to say Eastern, but it didn't come out quite right. All right, guys, enjoy and give me that feedback all throughout social media. Much love. Enjoy. You're listening to the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders. Lee Sanders. Samurai coated peanuts. Yeah. What what does that mean? Like a is it like a sauce? What's on it? I, dude, I don't know. I just know they're coated peanuts and they're by samurai. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are they coated or coated? Like there's like a Let's see here. like C O D E D. Like it's coated peanuts, you know what I mean? Oh, you no, know, not those kind. It's the it's the traditional. Like they're coated. secretly fucking they're not trying to share some sort of message into you, uh, you know, like. No, I wish. Trying to get something across. I wish. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. These are just regular, boring ass Cody peanuts. Well, what are they? What's the uh, point of them? Are they healthier, or what's what's the intent of the peanuts? No, I do see that. I see some bullshit about non-GMO. Trans- oh, okay. Trans fat zero. Oh, okay. Trans, there's zero trans fat in it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was yeah. say, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Republican listeners appreciate that. I know, right? Here, here, here's a, here's a there's picture. There's no trans. There you go. No trans fat. There you this go. This is a, uh, oh, all right. Uh, samurai coated peanuts. Shit's oh, okay. Good. Shit's good. Now, let me ask you this. Is that made by an Asian person or not? Well, let's see. I mean, with a name like that. Well, what does it say? <laughs> well, I'm just making sure. You know, I don't oh. want to get you in trouble. Here, here, have your mind blown. So we got Samurai Peanuts mm-hmm. that has yes. a Japanese face on it with a samurai mm-hmm. sword, and it's yep. made in Mexico. Oh, shit. I was going to say, is it made by Eddie Kingston? <laughs> 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 Yo, these are like my favorite fucking peanuts. 
How do you make these peanuts so good? How do you make them so good, Eddie Kingston? I just slap them fucking lightly over and over and over and over and over and over. Try my new Eddie Kingston samurai fucking peanuts over here. Jesus Christ. You're going to like them. I would be upset if you didn't try them. You got to have them. They're good. I, I like the fact that he went over to Japan and didn't even dye his beard. I kind of like that. I think that it shows you just where <laughs> New Japan pro wrestling is. That was ballsy. I wish I could do that. Just show yeah. up, you know, don't give a fuck about my appearance, right? You know, just, I, I was like, dude, if there was ever time to shave or put on some fucking just for men, like now's the time, like they're going to make you a champion. He just shows up. Blah. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> he's kind of, you know what, in a way, it's, he's the epitome of the guy that, you know, the father of the bride who shows up and he's like, do you guys have pants for me? You know, he just doesn't fucking have anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, like, I was supposed to wear shoes to this? Like, you're like, yeah, you're you kind of need to be playing some sort of a role of importance here. And he's like, oh fuck, all right, I guess. Oh my god, good old Eddie Kingston, though. Huh? I know, I know, dude. I rem- I'm proud for him in a way, though. You know, nah, he's you know, shit. I'm proud of. Yeah, him. That's all he's. Lee, that's all he's ever wanted was to be a Japanese person. That's all he's ever wanted, seemingly in life. <laughs> Was to get to feel like a Japanese wrestler. I shouldn't say person, wrestler. Maybe person too, but that was like his biggest fucking ambition. So I don't know. I just like to see people get their dreams, you know? Right. It's good sometimes to see that. (laughs) Even if they're fucking stupid, I like to see it, you know? So I saw you and Mish were playing a little bit of AEW Fight Forever. What'd you think of it so far? I'll be honest with you. I barely have it in me to play the fucking thing. I I gotta, I'm gonna give it a little bit more time this week. I've, you know, I'm in the same spot as you. I'm getting fucking paperwork done and typing shit out, all that type of stuff. It's just like redundant fucking work, dude. You, you're, you're similarly in the, in the same realm of work as me where it's talking about people and their problems and how to help them. And there's definitely useful, interesting stuff to learn, right. but there is a point where it does become fucking redundant where they, I, I don't know how many times they can tell you the same thing and you have to look at them and go, Oh, oh this is new, huh? Yeah. So this is all new information. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. That's how it's been. Dude, that's how, when you read the paper, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, but that's how it's yeah, been yeah. out here in DC. We've got these motherfuckers that's going, why are all these people getting shot every single day? What's going on with our kids? Oh, a stray bullet head went through my fucking. And I keep saying, well, what the fuck do you think is going to happen if all you keep doing is putting up new buildings, you keep opening up new restaurants and you don't do anything to take care of the poorest cities? What the fuck do you think is going to happen if you're not taking care of the less fortunate, you know, edu- educated and everything? What the fuck think you think is going to happen? Well, this is what dude, people think with enough money that they'll just evaporate or something. I don't know what the, the thought process is. You know, if we put up enough white subway tile and, and breweries, uh, all the poor people will just turn to turn to fucking steam or something. I don't know what they think is going to occur. But no, dude, this what's really unfortunate. And, you know, we don't. Uh, my, OK, my area has done been gentrified for like 50 years it's been a gradual process of them just finding anybody that doesn't have money and shooting them out of a cannon to new hampshire so it's been happening but what's not what drives me crazy is when you see this stuff right where they're like yeah we'll just go in there and we'll that's how we'll make the area better and i'm like well no you actually have to help the people right you have to do something for the actual fucking people that still inhabit it. Those dogs are pissed, huh? Yeah, man. They're mad. <laughs> They're like, stop shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why don't you just all be nice to each other? You're like, no, dog. That's not how it works. Every dog you see, day. You see, what you got to do, Lee, is you got to sit down with the dog and explain generational trauma to it. That'll help. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 
that, re- that reminds me, I'm still tripping over that video from yesterday where we all were just bashing the hell out of that fucking driver. All right, so let's set it up properly for him. So if you guys didn't see it, it's worth going out of your way. There's this viral video where you got this pizza delivery man and he pulls up in this nice neighborhood and you're looking at the camera from, I guess somebody had ring. So you're looking at it from the door they were knocking on his perspective and nice lady. I played it back. I was like, yeah, who is this? Cause at first I, I watched it and I just basically read the captioning. But then when I went back to play the audio, I was taken back. Cause I was going, Oh, it's a friendly lady. That's talking to this guy. That made dude even look more like an asshole considering, <laughs> right. considering what he said. And so, you know, he pulls out the pizza The lady's dog comes out and she's like, Max, come back here. Dog's friendly. Dog's one of those. What's up, man? I know you. You got food. What's up? Kind of one of them type of friendly (laughs) dogs. And the motherfucking delivery guy, he hands the lady the food and he goes, oh, yeah. uh, By the way, I just want to say you have a nice house and all you can give me is a five dollar tip. Yeah, that's real nice. And he's walking away and the lady says, well, thank you. And he says, fuck you. And you're just going, oh, boy. And and now she's going. So how much was I? I was talking to Tams about this last night. And the first question she asked me, Joe, she said, well, how much like what what all did she get? I said all she got was a single pizza. And apparently apparently it was it was 20 bucks for the pizza. And the lady tipped five. And Tams is like, well, I don't understand. Like, I'm not being a dick, but how much more was she supposed to give? Because anything past 10 is overkill. Right. Well, in that situation, too, what's weird about that is, like you said, yeah, it's one thing. Now, that said, I've known people who were straight up like catering. Like, I'm telling you, taking four or $500 to a place, setting it up for, you know, whatever, somebody in a company, a work party, a birthday party, and they've set up hundreds of dollars worth of food in somebody's place, and they've been like, yeah, here's $5. You're like, I... that's a lot different, though, than bringing one pizza. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess there's definitely a level to that. But no, she's right. Like, if it's just one pizza, it's like, wait, what's the... What's the problem with that? I'm confused by it. But yeah, man, we started getting into that shit. We were talking about it in the chat. And I, honest to God, I'm at the point where I see things like that. And it's all it is is just people being turned on other people. That's all that is. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's this thought process of, you know, that person, like, it's like, oh, you got an, a nice house here or whatever it might be. <sighs> that person could very easily just be like a middle upper class person for all we know. Right. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is because people now are basically being, you know, forced to live in pretty shitty conditions. If they didn't get in before a certain time to buy a house, buy an apartment, whatever the fuck to own something that's of decent value. There's a lot of resentment with people. And instead of looking and going, Hmm, who has, basically rigged the system to the point where I will never have the opportunity to own something like this. Instead, they get angry at those people, which is kind of unfortunate. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really is. I gotta say, cause I've been doing Instacart the past like two plus months now on the side and I love it. I love it. I've been telling my family about it and they, they like how my personality, like my outlook is more, Cause I'm telling them because like, what, what's the number one thing you like about, I was like, well, besides the money, like, yeah, like, well, honestly, I like being able to help people. It, it feels good. I get to help out my community while at the same time, every time I do it, I see neighborhoods where I go, God damn, I didn't know these homes were here. I didn't know this was here. I didn't know that was there. And nothing has pleased me more when I see that. All right. These people look like they're doing good. All right. They got. okay, that's what I'm trying to do. Let me maybe pick their brain a little bit and ask them how I can not just got to deliver it and fucking pizza. Fucking going to get five dollar (laughs) fucking tip. You know, it's like, (laughs) well, you're also a a pretty positive dude. You know what I mean? Like this that's a big part of it as well. I think people forget is it's, it's an attitude thing you have going into it. 
for sure. Like yeah. you actually want to go, like you said, I mean, I'm sure you're not thrilled about the idea. You're not like, whoopee, I can't wait to go out and fucking not be at home with my wife and drive food around. Like you're not fucking thrilled about it, nah. but you have a better attitude about it than a lot of people. And yeah. I mean, it does get exhausting. A lot of the people that are doing shit like that, working those jobs, that's not job number one. Do you know what I mean? Mm -mm. That's job two. That's mm -hmm. job three. Mm -hmm. And when people are getting to that point, uh, they get they get pissed. I get it. I get it. Now, that said, for somebody to be polite to you and friendly to you and you to respond like that, yeah, that's just... That's just so fucking shitty. But also when I think it does come back to this too, where when you do these delivery apps, whatever it might be, DoorDash or, you know, Uber Eats or any of that shit, you don't really answer to anybody. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I think that's a big part of it too, where he could be like, yeah, go fuck yourself, lady, eat shit and die. And what will happen? He'll get kicked off that app. Oh no. Just go use another fucking one if he feels inclined to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. it, it's not a specific place. It's not a specific restaurant to where if somebody acts like that, they got to really go answer for flipping out. Right. You know, you go, back, you go back into a place and your boss is looking at you and going, dude, what the fuck? There's a level of accountability to that mm -hmm. that changes everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, think, think about it as like a bartender. If you're a bartender and you work in a bar and someone's drunk and they're an asshole, you're going to have some sort of level of decorum with people to where, you know, all right, I got a boss. This is a business. I got to handle this in a way where this person's, I got to get this person out the door respectfully, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part, that's how it's going to be handled. Unless there's bouncers and then a lot of the times that'll be handled in a different way. But if it was your own goddamn house, if you were standing in front of your house and you were selling drinks, you know, as legal as that would be, and someone was an asshole to you, you could be like, hey, go fuck yourself. Fuck off. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're not accountable. You're not held accountable to anybody. So when that when that shit goes down with people that are working these delivery apps or driving for Uber or anything, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised when people are basically fucking broke and then they're like, be your own boss. It's like, are you shocked when people are their own bosses and then they're not nice to people who are, they don't fucking feel like it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but you know what? Tams brought up a good point after I showed her the video. She goes, so this dude apparently knew because you got to go back, watch the video now. Notice number one thing. There was never an exchange of cash going from one hand to another. So that tells you the guy knew as he was driving to that property, he already knew $5 was coming to him. <laughs> That's even worse. Yeah. So I think to myself, I'm like, so why, why did he take it? Why didn't the guy just deny it? I mean, I don't know how that shit works, right? You can you can just deny taking an order, right? Yeah. So yeah. why even do it? Yeah. I, I don't get it. If you're why? doing if you're doing DoorDash or if you're doing Instacart, they're all the same. Unless you guys tell me otherwise, they're all the same. You can see what you got to pick up. You can see in some cases how much the the base pay is itself. That way, if somebody decides they don't want to tip, you're at least looking at what the base level is. And then in some instances, if there is a tip, you can see all of that and you can decide whether or not, OK, yeah, I ain't driving 10 miles for 10 bucks and no tip. Fuck you. You know, so. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Which that's, dude, I think that's another part of it, too, is I've had people try to explain it to me before. I think you have, too, where they're like, people will tip bait people. Yes. They'll be like, yeah, drive out to the middle of nowhere for $20. Mm -hmm. And people are like, all right, I guess I'll do it. And then they'll just change it to like zero. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I, I don't know how quickly I would be back there with a bag of shit to throw at their house. <laughs> I'd be fucking furious. Like that's, that's it too. I did this. I do it. I worked in service long enough to where now I'm like, I'm all set. I don't have any interest in ever doing it ever again. Mm -hmm. COVID completely ruined that for me too. 
Well, you just saw the absolute shittiest behavior out of people. Like just the fucking absolute worst where I remember must have been like three weeks back from COVID. Right. Mm. And some guy came in with his girlfriend at the fucking at the bar. And he says to me, he's like, oh, you guys have any Coors Light or whatever? And I'm like, no, we don't. I'm sorry. You know, we just, we just don't have it. We're not getting in a shipment of it. And he's like, oh, what am I going to drink? Some fucking girl beer or something like that? I'm like, what? I'm like, you're that dedicated to Coors Light? Like, that's your be all end all. Like, you're like, oh, what are you saying? I'm gay because I got to drink not Coors Light. I was like, come on, dude. And that was like early, early on into it. I'm like, oh, this is just going to get worse. Do you know what I mean? There was like a good, there was a good week or two where people were like, they were like, oh my God, I'm just so happy to be doing something a little more normal. And that was over, yeah, within about mm, half, yeah, maybe a month, not even. Mm. Where it immediately went to like, fuck you. Why the fuck isn't everything great? Uh, and they just wanted to take shit out on people because they were a face that they saw. But no, I mean, that said, this is a part of the reason why like, I, I don't fucking bother anymore. Like I go to the same handful of restaurants now. It's pretty bad, mm -hmm. but I'll go to the same handful of restaurants because I'm like, yeah, you know, I know the people and they'll, they'll be nice and they'll do a good job because I, I just don't want to fucking, I don't want to put up with somebody either doing a horrible job and then me being like, ah, oh, God, I still feel bad. So I'm going to take it. And I also, at the same time, I don't want to be in the experience of looking around and seeing people be shitty to other people. I'm telling you, man, I did the shit long enough that I have like a, a little bit still of like the PTSD of being in a fucking restaurant mm. and looking around and I'll be like, man, they look like they're getting real busy. Are they going to be okay? Oh, uh, you know, it's like a real rush. Your PTSD. I kind of have that to a certain degree because I remember when I first went back to retail a couple of years ago, it was at the right at the start of the pandemic and nothing was more cool. I'm sure you got your, your fair share too, but nothing was more cool than man. Really appreciate what you're doing here, man. Oh, this is great. You know, without you wouldn't eat man I'm telling you really appreciate you. And it's like, wow. All right, cool. And man, yeah, that, did, that didn't, that didn't last that long. That did not last long. No, 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 uh, no. You know, right down to the point. I got a funny ass story. This actually happened the day before the 4th of July. So I'm working. I see this tiny looking woman. She's probably in her late forties, early fifties. She's probably, I would say, oh, I'll put her at about five, one, maybe four, four, eleven. I'm looking at her. I go, ah, she's about maybe a buck 50. My big ass can squeeze past her. I got, I got enough room. I can squeeze past her. So I get past her. Next thing I know, she says, excuse me. I go, huh? I'm, I'm sorry. What? It's like, you bumped into me. I said, like, oh ma'am. I said, it was unintentional. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't even think I bumped into you there. Are you, are you sure I didn't? And she's like, no, you bumped into me. It's like, well, ma'am, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. And she just, had me stand there for three minutes while she was belittling me, talking down to me. And I'm already sensitive as it is when it comes to my weight. I'm doing what I can with my diabetes and all. And I told her flat out, I said, ma'am, I'm really sorry. I said, but look at me. I'm a big dude. It wasn't my intention to knock you over. Just I thought I had enough space to squeeze on by you. You would think a person would say after they hear that, oh, man, you know, OK, you're all right. Well, just. Watch where you're going next time. This bitch went to go complain about me to the supervisor. <laughs> I, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, you're like, have fun with that. Have fun with that. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, well, I didn't the, go Eddie the, Kingston. You know, I didn't. Hey, I, hey, I got feelings here. OK, I got feelings here. You know, I didn't go Eddie Kingston, but it was just like, well, goddamn. Well, that's that's one of those moments where you just you're just glad like this was to me one of the best things that was helpful during COVID was that people were so fucking nuts that there was no chance of any employer remotely siding with people. 
Mm-hmm. That was nice because if people were being shitheads and you were like, uh, uh, there were specifically times where I'd looked at people and I was like, yeah, I, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that. And I just leave. I just walk away. Like I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to not. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm like, that's not okay. Mm-hmm. And then my boss would be like, oh, well, what did you say to him? I said, well, they were being rude and I wasn't going to deal with that. And that's not okay. Cause I'm busy right now. And there's a lot of work to do and I'm not going to stand there for 10 minutes and get yelled at. All right. And he was like, yeah, that's totally reasonable. I'm like, yeah, it is totally reasonable. Like, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> well, I guess this isn't a matter of where someone's like, excuse me, my lettuce is brown. And you're like, excuse me. You think you, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you fucking you bitch. Fuck you. Like, that's not that. Like it's people being purposefully shitty. I don't know. That was one of those things like towards the end of my uh, tenure of working with people in that way. Mm-hmm that I learned where I was like, you know what? There needs to be some sort of level where you're allowed to look at people in that setting and be like, yeah, I don't appreciate the way that you're talking to me right now. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to this because there's no, there's no way around. And, and, And honest to God, I think that that's, something like when people hear this shit where they're like no people don't want to work anymore they don't want to go to jobs and i'm like yeah well maybe if you said to people that they're allowed to disengage from people who are purposefully horrible and disrespectful to them that might make jobs a little better Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like uh, if someone's like excuse me can you get that off uh can you go get that for me it's too high on the shelf and you're like you're being really disrespectful that's that's one thing that's a completely different thing but if somebody's being a fucking piece of shit to you at your job you should be allowed to be like excuse me that's really not okay (laughs) like that's uh, i work here and yes but yeah it's not okay to be disrespectful like that right that's not all right right and, and unfortunately, because, you know, we live in a very, uh, the customer is always right, you know, uh, fucking culture. It's now gotten to the point where they're so scared that a goddamn dime might roll out the door. Yeah. That they'll just, oh, what's that? My, an employee I've had for 10 years. What do you want to do? You want to, you want to rub their nose in, in their own, in the piss? In the pit? You want me to rub them in piss? Okay, we'll do that for you. And you're like, well, yeah, no shit. These people don't want to work for you anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you wonder why. Like, it's like, no, nobody wants to work at Marshall's. Why is nobody working at the TJ Maxx? And you're like, because how many times were these people probably berated over a fucking old lady's bathing suit and no one supported them? Mm-hmm. And in, and in the process, they're like, here's $9 an hour. Like, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You think you're going to be like, oh, man, but I mean, this lucrative $9 an hour job, I really got to. And like I was saying, that's what I'm talking about with the apps there. Where it's like, yeah, there's no accountability in the sense of, yeah, oh, oh no, am I going to lose my not job with uh, Uber Eats? My not on the books hired position? Like what? What do you think is going to happen if you go across and go work at DoorDash? Are they going to call Uber Eats? Like, no, you just fucking download an app. Right. <laughs> People are just downloading apps for jobs. Like, <laughs> is there anything fucking funnier than that? Like, it's like, yeah, if you want to go, uh, okay, my father-in-law is uh, retired or partially retired at this point, mm-hmm. and he was trying to get a job, but I think it was Costco. It was Costco, Sam's Club, one of those deals, Oh, that's right? good money. That's good money. If you can get it, yeah. good money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, all right, good. Yeah, Rick, that sounds like a fucking good idea, dude. Go, you know, work part time there, you know, push carriages, whatever the fuck, just hang out, you know, talk about beer with the guys. Like it was a good gig for him. And he's like, yeah, I don't know, kid. I got to fill out this fucking application online. This is ridiculous or whatever the hell it was. And we're looking at it like, dude, just, just fill the fucking thing out online. Mm-hmm. just do it and he's like yeah no i don't want to he's like if i can't do it on paper and they can't have an interview with me i'm like well too then you're not gonna get the job <laughs> but then i think of it i think of how funny this is though in a way where i'm like they should want a 60 something year old guy working there because if you had a 25 year old person or whomever and they were like they had a car and they were like yeah you know what fuck this job. I'm out of here. I'm just going to go smoke weed and fucking deliver chicken fingers and make money Mm. with zero accountability. 
like, yeah, you got to uh, basically all places of employment need to be a little bit more flexible. Yeah. But also at the same time, like, I don't know, man, I'm really in between on this because I think people do need to stand up for themselves. But then I also understand why businesses might expect something out of people they're paying to a degree. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. They're just not paying enough for people to, in the most part, be respectful towards uh, anyone. And I think that's a problem is it's just like if you don't give people anything to to look forward to, they're just going to become miserable and shitty. I agree with that assessment. Yeah, I totally harp. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I've seen if people's it, morales go from, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking people I've actually trained. I've seen people's morale go from, man, I'm very upbeat. I got this group job. It's some type of money that's coming in is going to help me get from point A to B. And I have watched their demeanor change after a couple of weeks when they feel that when it counts the most and management doesn't have their back, you know. All right. Well, one of the oldest sayings is people don't leave jobs. They leave managers. Yeah. That's one of the oldest sayings at this point, you know, like that's, that's become a, a trope, but no, I mean, you have to, there has to be something you have to give people something. And I do think that's when, uh, that's when a really, rotten fucking mentality has overtaken a lot of places of employment where it's just they have now started to learn this idea of them putting their hands on their hips and being like you're just lucky to be here it's like that's going away man Mm -hmm. that is oh oh i'm just lucky to be here all right see you later (laughs) right (laughs) right and 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 see on the flip side to that people are now starting to understand and appreciate their worth. You know what I'm saying? Because like you got some people like, wait a minute, why am, I, why am I continuing to do this shit when you know what I'm saying? It's like I I I deserve better. I should get. It's like okay, well, what are you gonna do about it? To your point about your father-in-law, my father-in-law, oh my god, he must have, I guess, retired four or five years ago. And this guy, once in a blue moon, will give us a call. He'll tell this this sob ass story uh, about whatever's going on and i give it to him right between the eyes i said so what are you gonna do about it uh, well uh i was hoping you uh yeah you know, let, me, <laughs> let me borrow a couple of dollars so i can like no how about you go fill out this application right like we got plenty of networking for him to, you know, hook him up, get him a job, all that. I mean, God damn, the dude has a bus stop right in front of his house. He doesn't even have to go across the street, Joe. All he's got to do is just walk less than five seconds and the bus stop is right there. He can easily get to wherever it is that he needs to go. Fucking millennials, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, seriously, Jeez. like, seriously, like, fuck, fuck you. Well, people, man, people are turning on the boomer generation. And I think in a lot of respects, it's rightful. So I mean, if you really look at it, it God, I, I, I get it. There were huge recessions in this country throughout the past 50 or 60 years. There's a lot of points, you know, the crash in 2008, you know, in the 80s. If you look at the Rust Belt where, you know, my uh, my in-laws are from that whole situation. Mm. A lot of people did eat shit, dude. A lot of people went through a lot of stuff throughout the past, you know, four or five decades. But there is also this point now where 30 something year old people are looking at people in their 60s and they're like, nothing. You didn't say nothing. You got nothing. You uh, wait, wait, what have you been doing with these decades? I've been raising you. OK, well, how many things am I expected to do at once? How many things did you do at once? Two, one. You did a shitty job raising us, and then you couldn't even. I, uh, dude, I don't know what the fuck's going outside my window right now. Uh oh. Fucking, I don't know if it's, uh, it sounded like a fireworks or something. Who the fuck knows? Gives a shit. Uh, but no, like there is an obvious, you know, resentment towards that. And I, and to a degree, I kind of get it. I could totally see it because. I look at what happened with my immediate family. And there's a lot of people in my uh, immediate, you know, my mom's family, my dad's family, where they're, they're, they're trash people. They're fucking garbage, right? Mm. 
but most of them have more than most people my age just by fucking proxy <laughs> like like they married the right people or somebody died and they inherited something like they're okay to a degree whereas i look and i go i know people who are like 35 40 years old degrees on degrees worked their whole lives never made a problem never went to jail never got to never drug addicts never alcoholics and they're just like can i have a, a morsel they want just a just a crumb they just want anything like just the littlest like please it's like yeah no no why don't you just go to work like why don't you just go and figure it out and it's like eh. I think that's what they've been doing. It sure just seems like things are kind of fucked up. Yeah. Like truly, truly fucked up. But yeah, that's it. So you were just saying to him like, hey, why don't you get on the bus that's directly in front of you? Yeah. <laughs> that easy. And he wouldn't even do that. Mm. He wouldn't even do well, that. Well, what was he expecting you to do? Like, what was the thought? Like, he was going to be chauffeured or like what? He was expecting money to be put in his hand to remedy that situation, whatever was going on, until he's ready to extend his hand out again for another handout. Well, this is where I would ask, the, uh, this is where I'd have to ask you this question. Uh, and I don't know if she's asked him this as well. What is she like financially? Has he ever helped her at all? Like, let me pay for this. Let me take care of that. Or no. No. So. Well, what, what do you think? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what do you think at that point? You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> I, I laugh at shit like that so bad, man. I was like, well, well, you know what? Well, I gave you fruit by the foots and bologna sandwiches when you were seven. Okay, cool. Well, you kind of shit me out into existence. So I really don't owe you anything for that 30 fucking years later. Sorry. you like, right. Well, I don't want to go do it. Who wants to do this is what's funny to me. Who the fuck wants to really do things that much? Does anybody really want to do th like, like work? Is anybody really like really fucking horny for work? Because I hear all these stories about people where they're like, you got to love it. You got to love what you do. And, and I'm like, you know what? Most people want to be doing exactly what they want to do. Yeah. And that's 98% of the time. That's not work. Even people who have jobs doing things they like would still most of the time rather be doing something else. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. do you think Kevin Hart does it? He's like, all right, I got to go play Madison Square Garden. Who do you think is a part of him where he's just like, I want to eat a hot dog on a bench. I want to go to a bar and eat French fries. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, Oh, hey, uh, did you, did you, uh, are you a basketball guy at all? I don't feel, yeah, I don't know if you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the thing with Jochi, uh, Jochi, the Joker there? What? After he won the, after he won the NBA championship. Did you see that interview? Remind me what he said again. I probably did. Oh, God. It's one of my, it's honest to God, one of my favorite things like that has happened in the past five to 10 years where they interview him after winning the NBA championship and he's got, no reaction. Like they're like, oh my God, you won the NBA title. And he's like, yeah. And, and by the way, it's not like it's like a language barrier. He fucking speaks English perfectly fine. <laughs> like, oh, he just goes, uh, yeah. So like, how does it, how does it feel? He's like, the job is done. Like, <laughs> and they're just looking at him. Like, because they want they want these people because because it's their, it's a product right it's it's no different than anything else they want crying holding the trophy everything's possible I fought my whole life for this and this guy he just looks and he's like I want to go home I want to go ride my horses I want to go see my family. Cause it's a fucking job. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, they, it's the ultimate 
goes to show whenever anybody talks about, you know, love your job and, you know, feeling or so accomplished and getting wrapped up in it. This guy won the end. By the way, he won the MVP, won the fucking MVP, beat the brakes off of the heat. Like it was amazing. Yeah, was they won sweet. one game. Yeah. Oh no. They yeah. actually won a game or it was, a yeah, it was a gentleman's, it was a gentleman's sweep. If I, sweep. I okay. Okay. So fucking one game. Right. And they want this guy crying. They want him covered in champagne. They want the Michael Jordan shot of him. And by they, of course, obviously, I mean ESPN, all the sports media, who, by the way, can't wait to dump on this guy. And most of that is because he doesn't sell. He doesn't sell for them. They want him so badly to be one of these guys that's fallen all over themselves because that's the, uh, that's the NBA, right? That's the brand. Mm. Their title is supposed to mean something. No different than in wrestling, where if it's like, you know, well, I mean, that's part of the reasons why I uh, I don't like Roman Reigns so much is because Roman Reigns has the title and he's just like, yeah, that's right. That's about right. Yeah, uh, does this guy give a fuck? I, I, I can't tell. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've had a belt for three years now. Like, oh, shit. I mean, dude, this is fake. You got to kind of make us believe you care. But at the same time, like, oh, dude, it's one of my absolute favorite things. And they're sitting him at the podium, right? And they're like, well, what are you going to do now? He's like, I'm going to go home. Like, (laughs) they want him so Lee. They want this guy to be like, I can't wait to, I can't wait to crawl inside of Mickey Mouse's asshole. I can't wait to go down to Disney and eat pancakes with Goofy. Like they want him to say this so badly. And instead he's like, yeah, no, I want to go back to a third world country and play on horses. And wow. it's amazing. Dude, they say it and they go, there's a parade. He's like, you know, like, oh, well, you know, Joe, you know, there's a parade. He's like, when is the parade? And it's Thursday. And he's like, he's like, Thursday? Like he has this like, he's like, Oh, fuck you, dude. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> the, the look on his face is no different than when you just worked, you know, a 10 hour, whatever, nine, 10 hour shift, right? And someone comes up to you and they're like, hey, so uh, Brian called. He's going to be a little lady stuck in traffic. And you're like, what? 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 Like, listen, man, we just need you to hang in for like another 15, 20 minutes. He's going to be here soon. And you're like, Come on, man. I just want to go home. Like, that was his look Damn. for winning the NBA championship. <laughs> it's thunder. Ah, oh, dude. I'm about 90% sure that during this, during the fucking soup tonight, that my power is going to go out because I'm pretty sure that's thunder. Uh, I don't know. At first, I, I thought it was fireworks. I, heard I thought it was fireworks, dude. At first, because it was a bigger boom. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Idiot's still setting off fireworks, but. No, I have a feeling that's going to happen. But no, oh no, no, dude. I would highly recommend that to anyone to go and watch that. And then put that into perspective. The next time you're at your job and you're like, I'm just not feeling this. Just know there's a guy who I'm assuming is making, God, at least eight figures. Yeah. And and he just wants, he's like, can I, my shift's over. <laughs> Can I can I go home? But my, my, my shift's done. It's like that's it. His basketball is that's his nine to five. That's all he 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 was all set. He was good. A little bit over thirty three million dollars. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. He just wanted to leave. well. Well, you know that's got to be a part of it too. And this is probably why most people don't end up professional athletes. I mean, other than the obvious physical attributes, but how little would you want to work after that first check? As little as possible. I ain't oh, gonna dude, lie. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'd be like, yeah, I'm all done, dude. <laughs> I would I would love that Kyler Murray check where they're like, Yeah, we signed you for four years for like a quarter of a billion dollars, and he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna play Call of Duty now. Like, are you going to come to practice? He's like, no, I'm going to play video games. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, dude, isn't that what happened with, who was the MMA fighter? Not Logan Paul, but wasn't there an MMA fighter? 
that sold a Pokemon card and he retired after that? Oh God, I don't know. That sounds about well, that sounds about right in this dipshit economy <laughs> that we have going on right now. I said, shit, go ahead. That's that's how you do it. Ben Simmons. Oh no, was it Ben Simmons? Who was it? It was, it was, no, some, it was no. somebody. No, it was somebody that had sold a Pokemon card. They were an athlete and then they retired after that. I, I thought that was the funniest thing I ever fucking read. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm fucking I'm checking out the window here. Oh yeah, it's raining. It's going nuts. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, that's, that's understandable. I mean, when you think about it, like, especially like the running backs and the NFL and stuff like that, but they're like, do you want to keep going? And why? <laughs> I get the shit beat out of me, you know? Like, you know, you say that and that reminds me because I've been getting into his videos as of late. I see he's a controversial figure because of some personal off camera stuff, but I don't want to, I just like what he does with his little reviews, but Dave Portnoy of Barstool, you you, you think that guy likes getting up every fucking day? Oh, great. Here we go again. I got to eat another fucking slice of pizza. Oh, fucking joy. Hey, hey, Frankie, 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 where the fuck we going today, Frankie? Where we going today? Where we going to go eat pizza today, huh? Every fucking day is the same goddamn day, Frankie. What, when we going to do something different, Frank, Frankie? You know what I want to do today? Frankie, I just want to go sit on the bench and I, I, I just want to tender. That's all I want to do. I want to tender. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, but you know what though? He's, he's rich enough at this point. I mean, he's fucking disgustingly loaded. He's rich enough at this point that he truly does not have to do anything. Nah. So there is that, you know what? There is that thing about the internet entrepreneur people where you look at some of them and you go, Oh, they might, a part of them must actually want to do this. To some degree, hmm. either that or they're just so driven by whatever the fuck it was that made them get rich. I mean, their attention, dude. I mean, that's a big part of it, too. Dave Portnoy doesn't have to do any of that. He doesn't have to do fucking anything. Mm-mm. A lot of these guys that make this type of money, like even Logan Paul at this point, does he have to work? <laughs> Not really. Mm-mm. No. What's his name? The PewDiePie guy. I saw some of people like, yeah, PewDiePie is taking a time off from YouTube. I'm like, good. Enjoy. <laughs> I'd stop doing shit too. If I made uh, what, uh, like a hundred million dollars playing fucking Minecraft, I'd be like, yeah, I'm done. Like, well, no, dude, keep playing Minecraft. Nah, that's all right. I'll go do literally anything else. Mm hmm. Unless you're really, like I said, unless you're really enjoying it. Oh, holy shit. It's going nuts out there. You ever met him, uh, Dave, Dave Portnoy? No, I mean, he is definitely like a local hero, whatever, around here. Yeah. But he's a lot harder to run into than I think people realize. He's rich as shit, dude. He's insanely wealthy now at this point where people will say to you, they'll go, oh, well, you know, he's kind of a local celebrity. I'm like, yeah, but he's a local celebrity with a hundred million dollars. Mm. It's like running into an athlete at this point. Like, mm. you know, there are obviously videos of him where he's like standing in front of the pizza place and, you know, oh, I'm going to try this and I'm just going to fucking have it or whatever it's going to be. And I'm like, yeah, no, people, people are going to bother him in most places he goes, especially around here. So he's not really just popping off like that. He could probably go to most other parts of the country and be fine. But here, nah, he gets too much. He gets too much recognition. I wonder if when he's trying to pick up a girl, if that's his line, you know, one bite. Everybody knows. The <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think at this point, I'm pretty sure he's with some ridiculous model, dude. He's he's on that level at this point. But he would just be fine anywhere he went. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he just he just be just fine with whatever. Actually, there's a fucking crazy story, and I gotta go make dinner before the show. But I'll tell you this: it just makes me laugh. There was a, a hockey player from around here, which was a kid named Tyler Sagan. He's now like damn near thirty. So this was a long. This was like ten plus years ago, mm-hmm. and the kid was playing here, and he was like nineteen, twenty years old, and. The kid looks like a, a, a model. 
Like he's like a, he's the male model. He was like a Finn Balor type, super athletic, full sleeves, just real fucking good lot in life. Super, super, super fucking like talented kid. Right. Mm. And he was just banging his way through the city. Just piling him up like a fucking accordion. Just not a problem at all for this dude. He's got money. He's got fame and he's got looks. Mm. Right. The kid gets shoveled out of the city. Why? Because he's fucking one of his co-workers' wives. Wow. Yeah, the definition of why. Like, that is the very <laughs> definition. Like, why? There's no need for that. And by the way, like, I, in a weird sort of way, and of course, like, I, you know, no person should probably say this out loud because they invite horror on themselves, but... I completely see the situations where, you know, as a young guy, I was dating, you know, I was dating a girl that I met at college and she ended up leaving me for some other guy. And now she's married to that guy. And she's been married to him for a long time. And I look at that and I go, oh, she made the right choice. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like you see that you go, uh, oh, you know, it's one thing for somebody to be like, oh, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to be with you anymore. And then they go off with somebody, you are like, oh, well, they, they suck. Right. And then the relationships, you, you see it all over the fucking internet and their relationships over in like a month and a half. You're like, oh, well, apparently I was that big of a piece of shit that I got bested by somebody they didn't even want to be with for six months or whatever. But the idea of this fucking kid doing that, and it's like, dude, to just have some sex, this. Go have it over there. It's right over there. There's more of it. Like when it's the, you know, when it's the sad, you hear the stories of like the sad sack guy that gets lured into doing some stupid shit. And you're like, well, that guy's not, he doesn't have a lot going for him. So I can see how he would get bamboozled maybe into not making the best choice. But this dude, I'm like, you could have just, just walked around. It's a city full of colleges. I repeat, you're a rich, famous, good-looking guy. Mm -hmm. This is easy for you. You're like, yeah, no, I, what I want to do instead is set my life on fire. You're like, God damn it. Fucking idiocy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. What'd you make of it? Right, I, I, I think I'm going to make a little bit of the pasta. I know, shocking, right? Oh. I'm going to fucking spaghetti bender over here. What you doing, all Alfredo? Right. You doing Alfredo? What you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I didn't fucking, I got no will to live, apparently. I'm going to need some fettuccine. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> take, take a picture, man. You know I've been going down that that food porn rabbit hole. You seen some of oh, those cool. links I sent you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm already, it's, it's a battle for me every day anyways. <laughs> I would just, you know, whenever they do those memes where they're like, red pill, you can fuck it up there. So like green pill, you can do this. Like any of the ones where it's just like, you can eat all the shitty food you want and not. I'm just like, yes, that one. Like, <laughs> what about this one? I'm like, no, no, the eat one, the food one. Yep. <laughs> yep. Whatever it's going to be. It's like, you could have sex with a supermodel. And I'm like, you once? No, no, no. Give me the food. Yeah. Yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> give me. Give me the I can eat calzones every day and not gain weight. I'll take that fucking one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but all right, off I go, Lee. Good, good right. luck with the rest of the show there, brother. I'll all see right. you guys in a little bit. All right, Joe. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah, no problem. All right. Bye, right, man. All right. So I'll stay with you guys for about another 10 minutes. Um, I'll extend this to the Discord as well. Um, that was cool because originally I was just going to go solo and Joe was like, when are you doing the show? I told him and... He was like, oh, I'll pop on for a little bit and talk. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's let's do it. So I'll stay on for about ten more minutes. I'll let you guys decide uh, what you want to, what you want me to talk about. I can either quickly glance over AEW. I can talk about the latest Dark Side of the Ring episode. Whatever you want me to talk about for the last ten minutes, and then we'll uh, play some music in the Discord. Get it ready for uh, Mission Joe. Once again, for those of you not in the Discord and you missed the great chat that was going on and everything, that was my good buddy Joey Numbers from Wrestling Soup. Join him and Anthony Missionary Thomas Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. 
I know they do Mission Kev. They usually do something on Wednesdays. It's either Tuesdays or Wednesdays, usually on Wednesdays in the afternoon. Check them out. Good guys, man. Been buddies with them for a couple of years now. Yeah, that was that was loads of fun. Power Slap 3. It's Friday, July 7th. Tune in live and free on Rumble. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Power slap. I'm I'm good. Yeah, Eddie, I watched one clip of that. It was something online. I just watched one clip of that and I I just I can't do it. I can't. Just the visual of just seeing somebody stand there. Okay. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that concept. So look here, dude. I'm going to stand here with my arms behind my back, right? And what I want you to do, I want you to Slap the shit out of me as hard as you can. Now, hopefully, hopefully I don't fall on the ground and go unconscious. And hopefully half my face doesn't end up being like that one episode of Martin where he got knocked the fuck out. Right. And then if I'm able to come to, I'm still in it. Then I'm a need for you to stand there. So I can smack the shit out of you. And we're just going to keep doing this until somebody can't slap the other person anymore. And we'll do this all in the name for cash money. Now, I don't know about you guys. I'll settle for just slapping the shit out of somebody and hauling ass. (laughs) Fuck the money. (laughs) Two grand? That's it? Two grand? No, man, no. If I'm going to stand there and get smacked, I need a lot more than that. I need a lot more than that because we're talking head trauma and all kinds of other shit. I know I'm going to be signing some waivers, too, as far as lawsuits and shit. Nah, man, you you got to have me. You got to have me. You got to give me a payday. Sorry. You got to give me a payday, yo. Seriously. Four grand. Wait, so two grand for the fight. Four grand if they win. No, that's still not enough, dude. Two grand in today's society with all this shit that me and Joe just talked about. When we scratched the surface on that. Nah, no, you're going to have to. You're going to have to make that at least. If you want me to do it. Right. As far as what's fair and what I would do, what's fair is you give everybody, I would say 10 grand for the fight, 15 grand if they win. What I would take, I would take, I would take seven grand. I could do a lot of good with seven grand. (laughs) Yeah, he's underpaying big time, dude. He's underpaying big time. (laughs) That is wild as shit. I still haven't played more of the AEW Fight Forever video game. I got lost on the created wrestler bullshit. And after that, I just pretty much paused. That left, I can't tell you guys, that left a very nasty taste in my mouth. Okay, so let me set it up properly. Because for those of you that don't play video games, you'll kind of find this interesting. So I load up AEW Fight Forever. This is for Xbox One, by the way. So experiences may differ for PlayStation 5, Xbox X, S users. So keep that in mind. The load up time was fucking ridiculously long. That's for starters. I probably was looking at the main screen homepage for about four minutes before the shit loaded up. Finally, no bullshit. Loads up. First thing I do, I go in. Start making a wrestler because that's what everybody really cares about is making the wrestlers. Extremely limited options, y'all. Extremely limited options. When I say extremely limited options, I'm saying there's probably an Eddie. If Eddie poked his head around, he'll back me up on this. There's probably about maybe five different faces that you can use as a template. It's probably about five, maybe 10 different costumes you could put on. It's about four or five different set of eyebrows, about maybe 10 different sets of eyeballs you can use. You get the gist. Limited, 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 limited. Okay. I'm making myself, now I consider myself to be a handsome, dark, chocolatey man. Why my joint come out looking like Abdullah the Butcher? 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? But it's, it's bad. It, it is, it is really, really bad. And then as far as I think where they shine is the fact of the first and last names that's in there as far as what they'll announce. But I thought it was so weird that for the last name Sanders, which is a common name, they don't have that in there. And I can just imagine if they don't have something that's common as Sanders, I can only imagine what other common last names that they don't have in there. I found that to be most interesting because, and I'm surprised most people didn't talk about this in their review, but you would have thought that THQ slash Ukes would have been able to recycle some of the stuff that was going on with their collaboration with WWE before WWE had partnered up with 2K. You would have thought that they would have been able to, uh, they would have been able to tap into that respected library of audio. But yeah, that very, very weird. Very, very weird. So I see the latest trend right now is you got a bunch of motherfuckers that's pissed off at the amount of created wrestlers that they're fighting online. Apparently the stats and all that is really jacked up and all kinds of other stuff. So people are having a hard time putting the CAWs down. (laughs) It's funny. There's one guy, he's John Moxley and he's just beating the crap out of a CAW and he has the caption, fuck CAWs. And I guess because it it took him a, a good minute to, yeah, but I don't know, man. Uh, I'm kind of like Joe. I'm having a hard time getting back into the game. I have been spending more time when I have the free moment checking out WWE Supercard. I've been playing that. I know, right? That's kind of that's kind of fucked up, right? But somebody has said in the chat that they're getting ready to put out there the Stampede. Was it the Stadium Stampede DLC? They're getting ready to put that out there. So. I'll probably check that out. I I think where the game is probably most likely going to shine for a lot of people. If I were to just put an estimate out there, educated guess, I I think the gimmick matches like stadium stampede. I think that's, what's really going to be getting people the casino Royale. I think the gimmick stuff like that is really at its core going to. And then the other thing I think that'll, continue to have interest for a lot of those interested in picking up the game is what you can do with that game on platforms like steam right because you're able to go in the customization i saw one guy today y'all should go check it out i saw one guy who i think through his steam version he created his own cm punk and the motherfucker it looks I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Don't believe me. Matter of fact, Eddie, um, I know you got Twitter. See if you can find that image for me real quick and post it uh, in the chat for me. Um, but there's a really good image of a CM Punk that he made. And the CM Punk literally looks like the CM Punk that's running around right now. It looks that damn on point. That damn on point. It's, it's, it's badass. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I just can't. Yeah. I'll pick it up again, though, probably before the weekend is out and that'll be it. Let's see. You guys are just going on and on and on with Abdullah the Butcher. You guys, you guys are wrong. (laughs) You guys are fucking wrong. Oh, shit. Oh, you guys are wrong. All right. So let's see. What else can we get into here? Ah. I don't know. You guys want me to talk about Dark Side of the Ring real quick? Share some thoughts on that. I know I did mention I did mention it. Yeah. All right. All right. So look, in regards to the episode of Dark Side of the Ring on Junkyard Dog. I thought that it was an interesting episode from this standpoint. I didn't know that much about Junkyard Dog. I knew about his passing uh, as far as drugs and but I didn't understand the circumstances around his death. So of all the episodes of Dark Side of the Ring, this episode really struck to me at its core on a couple of different levels because I, not for nothing, I did have a uh, close relative many, many years ago. And I'm happy to say I'm knocking on wood for them now. Um, They've been drug and alcohol free for over 20 years. But back then uh, they were a drug addict and their drug of choice was heroin. And so 
you know, this definitely has struck um, a little close to home for me and, and, and everything with Junkyard Dog. But I thought that there was a lot of stuff that the boys at Dark Side of the Ring had glanced over for starters. They didn't talk in great detail about how he was coming up through college football right down to the point he actually was able to get two tryouts with the Oilers back then they were known as the Oilers and with the Green Bay Packers but he didn't make the cut I think it was due to injury or whatever and from there he actually junkyard dog he actually had became a uh, a deputy in law enforcement and the career in wrestling got started in there because there was a fellow deputy that looked at his size and felt he'd be pretty good in the wrestling industry. Uh, turns out that deputy was a referee. So rest was pretty much made history, uh, pretty much history, as they say. As far as the guests that appeared on that episode, I thought it was a, a great ensemble compared to last week. Because I think most of you guys would agree. If you watch the Doink, the clown episode, they rely too much, I, I personally feel. And I respect the hell out of them. But they relied too much on Jake the Snake Roberts. They relied way too much on him. But I felt that for JYD, they had the right amount of people. Uh, it ranged from Jim Ross, and that made a lot of sense because he had a somewhat close relationship with JYD, Bill Watts, all of that. Uh, they also interviewed his nephew. What was the nephew's name? I think. Jarvis, I got it down in my notes. Give me a second. Jarvis, because I'm so far what I've been telling you, I've been remembering off the top of my head here. Uh, what was it? Ted DiBiase. Matter of fact, they were very close friends, extremely close friends, right down to the point JYD was DiBiase's best man at his wedding. Uh, who else? The nephew. I can't think of the nephew's name right now. Tony Atlas. They spoke with Tony Atlas. They didn't get to talk to Bill Watts, although he did release a statement in regards to when JYD had went to the WWE and, and all that supposedly over some racist remark. And you got Teddy Long saying, God bless Teddy Long. Ser seriously, God bless Teddy Long. But I truly believe in my heart of hearts, speaking as a black man, I believe JYD just did not have the heart to tell Teddy Long or anybody else the truth, which was, and, and look, Vince McMahon was notorious for this back in the day when he was just buying up all the territories and those that were holding out, but they still had some really great talent. He was notorious for going to those talents and giving them some extra money. And remember back then there was no contracts in play yet. It was all just verbal handshake deals. I firmly believe Vince McMahon, Jarvis Woodborne. Thank you, S. Jarvis Wilborn, Woodborne. And I truly believe Vince McMahon simply made JYD an offer he couldn't refuse. And JYD said, okay, how can I turn this down? But when it's all said and done, JYD just up and bounced. He didn't even give Bill Watts an opportunity to finish him out in Mid-South. And that's the real travesty of it all, because Bill Watts went up to the moon and back to really put that guy over. And this was more for Bill Watts. It was really personal when JYD left. Somebody that is supposedly racist ain't going to be doing all that stuff for JYD that Bill Watts had did. I mean, let's not forget uh, who was his booker. And Mid-South, Ernie Cat, the legendary Ernie Cat, who he fired once because he was like, look, I need you to train JYD, get him caught up to speed. You know, let's let's go. I need you to train him and, and, and get him better. You know, he's got some flaws here and there, but you know, I need you to straighten him up, get him on point. Ernie Lab coming right back. Yeah, you know, this ain't going to work. Da, da, da. He's, he's this, he's that. No, he's pretty stiff. Da, 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 da. He's only got like two moves. Da, 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 da. And Bill Watts wasn't happy with what he heard because Ernie Ladd was missing the boat. He only pretty much had fired him, but eventually brought him back after like a couple of months or whatever. But I think it was an offer uh, that JYD couldn't refuse. 
But I think JYD should have went out the the right way when it was all said and done. And, you know, it's sad what became of him. But and here's the other thing, speaking as a black man here, you know, they hear Coco Beware and, and all the other guys. Ah, well, you know, Vince Sr. had the Pedro Morales for the Spanish people. He had this for the he had this. And then when Vince Jr. took over, you know, a bunch of white people. It's kind of like, dude, when it's all said and done. You couldn't touch Hulk Hogan. You find me somebody that was, you know, that should have been, I will say, okay, yeah. But I mean, you had to ride that Hogan gravy train uh, back then. It opened up so many goddamn levels. It it wasn't even funny, man. But yeah, it it was a pretty interesting episode. A lot of omissions there. I'll leave you guys with this. I'll leave you guys with this uh, as far as uh, two big takeaways from the episode. One is the fact that, and you guys owe this to yourselves, and I wish that they would have talked about this on the episode because the research is there. But look up when JYD was expelled from school. Basically, when the assassination of MLK had went down and everything, there was some stuff that had went down at one of the schools that JYD was attending. I think it was a high school. And he was upset at the fact and other students were mad at the fact that the flag at their school wasn't lowered at half stance to remember Martin Luther King. And then you had this whole protest, this whole thing had broke out and everything. And JYD had spoke up and he was like, you know, I think he cursed the principal out or whatever. But when it was all said and done, JYD and a bunch of other people got suspended. The NAACP and others, they had got involved. And, you know, at that point, JYD just decided, okay, look, I'm done with the school regardless. I'm just trying to pursue my football career. I think that really been really would have been a really good story uh, for the major audience to hear about. So do some research. Check that out. The other thing that they did not talk about. JYD was driving nine hours there to go see his daughter. What they didn't mention is the fact that by the time Junkyard Dog had arrived, his daughter, now if I remember it right, because my memory's a little fuzzy from over the years, so forgive me, but it was either a case where the daughter did not know her father, JYD, was coming down, or she had decided, okay, I'm just going to go hang out with friends and I'll meet up with dad later. Or, or something like that. But basically, by the time she found out her dad had came and went, she basically learned the next day, your dad came. Oh, man, I missed him. Yeah, and uh, fortunately, he's dead. So she learned all that in one fucking take. It's a lot of omissions. That's why I always tell people, you know, when you're watching these episodes of Dark Side of the Ring, I mean... It's good for what it is, the way they condense it in that whole 45 minute format and everything. It's good. But at the same time, you really if you're curious about that wrestler and that was one of your favorites growing up, you really owe it to yourself to on your own accord, go online, do the research. You learn so much that you go, wow, why wasn't this included? Like, how do you not have time to mention this? Hey, this was a pretty big deal here. What 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 the hell is going on right here? Like, for instance, when JYD was doing real good financially, DiBiase was having some financial issues and JYD was there to help him out. Once JYD hit it big as the million dollar man and JYD was now it was his time of need, DiBiase helped him out. That's another omission uh, that they had there from that episode. So so there's a lot. There's a lot that you guys definitely want to want to check out uh, on your own. So FYI. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm ready to hop in the Discord, listen to Joey and Mish play some music, and uh, check out their show. I just thought it'd be kind of nice to do a a nice loose edition. I don't have anything to say about AEW, for those of you that want me to talk about AEW, because I know Discord ain't going to trip, but uh, my longtime listeners, especially uh, YouTube community and on the downloads, they're going to be like, AEW... What the fuck do you want me to say about AEW this week? It was the shittiest show that I ever saw. Um, I wasn't proud of the episode they put out. 
And then the ratings, don't even get me started on the collision ratings, right? They, they got to do something. They got to do something and real fucking quick. I'll tell you this, collision, got to go back to being live ASAP. Checked out the show this past weekend. I thought they did a pretty good episode, but yeah, man, they, they got to do something quick and live is part of it. I know Jonathan Koshman and who was it? Dax Harwood. They had exchanged a couple of words. I, I never looked at Jonathan Coachman being a snide asshole trying to take jabs and insult people. He's literally speaking from a place of somewhat experience about wrestling on a Saturday night, at least in modern times. He's right to a certain degree, but I always say there's an audience for somebody out there. If Live PD at one point could bring in 2 million viewers on Friday Saturday shows and they could even do it during the middle of the week. You know, the audience is out there. You, you just got to be selling your product to them just right. You know, but I, I will say it is a work in progress, but live, they got to be live. Everybody likes the, uh, the live stuff. Do I think they planned for the fourth weekend? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I honestly believe with everything that was going on. No, I, I don't think so. So I'm curious to see how the rest of this month plays out and if they can rebound because the rating so far, it's it's not good. But yeah, the dynamite for this week, I didn't care for it. So if, if that makes me a WWE hater or, or or no, sorry, if that makes me a WWE dick sucker, uh, you know, I'm an AEW hater. If that makes me not a Christian or, or whatever, fuck it. I'll wear it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wear it. <laughs> All right, I am out of here. Somebody play some music in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Use the keywords, the RCWR show. Till next go round. Wishing all y'all to be safe. Most importantly, be kind to one another. Take care, y'all. Ta ta for now. Thanks for listening to Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive.